Welcome to Exomatch trick number 609. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and can download the workbook Magic Trick 608 to 612. In this trick here, this is the second part of 608. Our original goal over here was we had a, um, a, a table here, variables across the top, periods for students, students' names here, and at any intersection, boom. Period 3, student 8, we had a name. And we are interested in the blanks. Ultimately, in this big example, you can see here we wanted to list all the students' names for period 1, 2, 3, etc. that had free periods. That's for the teachers, so they can go talk to the students and say, hey, you should probably be in um, study hall or something. And over here was for the students. We have all the students' names, and boom, they're listed dynamically all of their uh, free periods. Now, we, I made a smaller template here, 608. We actually, uh, with our table here, extracted the students' names for each period. But in 609, what we want to do is, here's our um, periods. Here's our student name. Boop, boop. Here's all our raw data. Over here, we listed the student names, but over here, we want to. We already have the students' names listed. We need to count the number of free periods and then list their actual periods that are they are free. Now, this formula will be different than the one we did in 608. Um, two two things will be different. One is we're gonna display the multiple return values in columns. So instead of the rows function and, and row, we're going to have to use columns and column. Secondly, we have a totally cool twist here. Uh, we need to return two items per cell, period 1, 8 AM, which is cool enough in itself. But then we're going to run in trouble when we try to um, display this time. And we'll figure out how to fix it. Now, let me do some adjusting here just so we can. Uh, and I'm going to actually scrunch this. The first calculation we're going to do is count the number of free periods. So for Sue, it's two, right? But just so I can fit everything on the screen, I'm going to go like that, go like that, scrunch this up here. All right. Um, first, let's count. And uh, just like in the last one, easy, we'll use count if, right? Count the range. Boop, that's a relative cell reference. We need a criteria. It is double quote, double quote. That means, hey, blank. So count the blanks. That'll give us two. Double click and send it down. So we have zero here because there are. The student is taking a full load, no free periods. Now, our formula over here, our goal, unlike the last one we listed student names, we have to list the periods. So, um, but before we do that, we need to turn this formula. For example, here, 2. Column 1, column 2 have to show the period and the time. But right here, it's got to show a blank. So we're going to have an on-off switch, in essence, equals if. And in the last video, we used the rows functions to have a number incrementer. Notice one column, two column. Ah, when we get to the third column, it's got to show a blank. So we're going to use the columns with an S. I'm sitting in I3, so I'm going to say dollar sign I3. That's two things different than our last 608. We're using the columns to count columns as we go this way. And we're locking the column reference, not the row reference. So we lock that one, and then I3. Now what does this do? I to I is 1, but when we get over to this column, this will be locked I, but the I will turn to a J. And how many columns are between I and J? 2. Beautiful number incrementer inside a formula. We're going to say, is that number greater than this one? Now, when we copy the formula this way, it's got to be locked on the column. But when we go down, the dancing ants needs to move to the next count of free periods. That's our logical test. Now, when the columns are greater than the count, what do we want? Value if true, double quote. We need to show a blank. Otherwise, the value of false, well, this will be our lookup function. Remember, we're looking up two things here. We will use the index. Now, this one's going to start to get more interesting than the last one, because in the last one, we just had a single array, and then we had to do our, uh, our row number, we have to do a column number here. Now, the array, we actually have two items. 
And in this cell, this cell, if it's period 4, it needs to say period 4 dash 2 p.m. So no problem. The array lookup is going to be, boom, this. And it has to be locked in all directions, so F4. Ampersand, Shift 7, that is the join symbol. And this one right here, F4. Um, but we have to do uh, one other thing, because our goal is to list period. and uh, period 1 and 8 a.m., we actually want a dash between it. So after the first ampersand, double quote, dash, double quote, ampersand. Now this will just, anytime index, since index is a lookup function, right, this is just like joining two columns here. If we highlighted both of them, it would not work because it would end up being a two-way lookup, and we don't have a two-way lookup here. We're looking up just one item just one item. It just happens to be that the two parts that make up the one item are in two cells. So that's why we had to join them there and with a dash. All right, we got our array, comma, row number. Now, we really should hit a comma and go to column number, because remember, column one, two, three, four. But forget it. I'm going to backspace index understands if it's a one-way lookup it doesn't matter if it's horizontal or vertical you throw the row number or column number into this argument and it will work all right now what are we going to do here we have multiple column numbers get this the first for sue the first thing we're returning is that's a blank so we need period 2 10 a.m. we have two of them we have multiple items so now we're going to have to deal with the small function why? Remember, our goal is to enter column numbers. Column 2, 4 is what we need. The 2 has to be here. The 4 has to be here. We have multiple ones, so the small can deal with that. First, though, we need our criteria. If, logical test, any of these, and this has to be locked with the F4 key, the column reference, because when we copy it this way, right? Actually, I'm going to scoot this over like this. We don't need those names over there. I should have scooted that over earlier. If any of those, and this has to be copied this way, locked, but when we move down, the dancing ants need to move down, right? Any of those are equal to blank. Equals double quote, double quote. Then what do we want? Value of 2, we want the column. So I'm going to use the column function. And I'm going to actually highlight this that same range. I'm going to use it a few times. Column. Now, right now, B is 2, because it's the second column. C is 3. That's not going to work. We actually need a 1, 2, 3, 4. So to make our formula robust, we highlight this range inside the table. We're getting a 2. We don't want it, so we do minus, and we use the column again. Now I'm going to Control V and Backspace. Now what does that do? Right now, it would say, this is an array of values, but that's um, 2, because b is 2. So it says 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. But we don't want 0, 1, 2, 3. So we add 1 back to get our column 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this is robust. There's other ways to do this. But this rules, because these cell references are inside the table. The only time that we would ever have this formula mess up is if we deleted the whole table. And that only happens when you're going to delete this part, too. So that's our value of false. Just like in our last video, you can highlight this and see F9 and see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, which is exactly what we want. You could also see these um, the if part here, control, I'm sorry, F9, false, true, false, true. Whoop, whoop. Control Z. Highlight them all together. Actually, let's close off the if, because we do not need anything for the false. And then you can go ahead and highlight the if and hit the F9. This is, if you have hard times with formulas like this, F9 it and watch as you build the formula what each part is delivering to the formula. False 2, false 4. Those are the two row num column numbers we need. I'm going to control Z. Small has an array now. Now, which one in those arrays do we want to extract? We need the second one and then the um, the first and second one, only two numbers in the array, so we paste that columns. That's our number incrementer. So as we move the formula this way, the first one, the columns will deliver one. It will extract the 
second column. When it moves over here, this will say 2, and it will tell small, extract the second column, which is 4. Now, here's our screen tip. Got the close parentheses on that one. The next screen tip comes up. We've already put our column number into this row number argument. It understands because it's a one-dimensional. Close parentheses on that. We have everything we need. False, we just put that one in. Close parentheses and Control Shift Enter. Now, here's the problem. And let's just copy it over and see if it works. It does work, none there. But now I have to go back. I'm going to Control ZZ and fix it. Now, all that's happening is formulas do not look at formatting. That one uh, right here, right? 10 a.m. is the proportion of a 24-hour day, 0.416666. That is how time is um, preserved in the cell. Even though we see 10 a.m., it really is listed at this, as the proportion of a 24-hour day. No problem. We need to format it inside the formula. To do that, we use the text function. Now, that brown range right there is the time. So we come over here very carefully and type the text function. Text function takes our value, and it's an array now. It's a number of values, which is no problem. Comma, and now you have to know custom number formatting to format it inside the formula. We just do double quote, and then hour, colon, minute, minute, uh, space, am slash pm, and double quote. Now, if you don't know custom number formatting, you can always look at your time formatting, click on the cell, go Control-1, look at the, and then click on Custom, and it will actually list it for you. So you can actually go scoop it out and steal it and paste it here if you don't know how to type it freehand like that. Now we got to close parentheses, and remember, we're editing in the middle of a formula. That gets pretty tricky sometimes. So I'm going to rely on my screen tip to remind me to put a close parentheses. And there we have it, Control-Shift-Enter. And now let's copy it over. And there we have exactly what we want. Sue. So now the students use this one. Sue, I'm like, oh yeah, I have period two and period four free. So our goal is to list the periods that students have uh, free. And there they are. Let's test it, though, right? All of a sudden, uh, this student says, you know, I can't take four classes. Plus, Business 216 is listed twice. Uh-uh. So there we go. Um, and there, sure enough, it shows up. If we were to add another one here, for example, so Joe is going to take Business 214 at Highline Community College, Advanced Excel. Oh, that is such a great class, so much fun. And sure enough, now Joe has both periods, three three and four. That can't possibly be right unless my eyes are not looking at this correctly. Joe should, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> right, my eyes weren't working there. You guys are like laughing, <laughs> what are you talking about? There's the two free periods, three and four, listed perfectly. All right, um, fun with array formulas to make a dynamic template for uh, the teachers to see all of the people who have free periods and the students to see their actual free periods. Array formulas, because dynamic matters here, we need to change this template and have everything pop out. 608, 609, all right, we'll see you next magic trick.